Cherie, thank you very much indeed for joining us. And um, my deepest condolences for what your homeland and, and, you know, people are suffering. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Mm. It's good to be here to talk to you about this. It's horrendous. What a horrendous thing. And I'll just say, um, just so that you know, it's not my personal homeland. I'm not actually Jewish, but I, I work a lot with the Jewish community and I have done a lot of research on Israel as part of my academic work and have... Uh, have very close connections with Israelis. Yeah, and, and you're right uh, about this, um, uh, columns and research. Yes. Cherie, yes, in right. the yes. context, and it is horrid to say, but in the context of this conflict and these tensions, where does this... I, I, it seems silly to give it a rating because there is much violence and there's much horror on, on both sides, I've got to say, but this seems, I don't know, particularly barbaric. Yes, yes, it absolutely is. And this is unprecedented for Israel. Israel is used to rocket attacks. It's used to war in the past. It's used to being surrounded by enemies from surrounding countries, invading, uh, invading armies. Uh, but this attack was the infiltration of terrorists, and I'm really pleased to hear that you're courageous enough to call them terrorists, because if this is not Well, why the hell wouldn't you? Uh, Shuri, why wouldn't you? Yeah. Who isn't calling them terrorists? Well, I, I'm afraid a lot of people are still um, not willing to go that far. But So what we've seen here is that we've got these terrorists invading communities, Jewish communities, during a sacred festival, which is supposed to be one of joy, uh, young people having a party raid, as you mentioned, they going house to house, murdering people indiscriminately, taking babies, children, um, old people. You know, this is despicable. This is terrorism. And uh, so also, coming back to your question, it is unprecedented. This is next level. It's, the, it's straight out of the ISIS playbook. And look, for us here in New Zealand, uh, it, it's just incomprehensible. But the context there is that it's the Middle East. And so in the Middle East, if you go to Syria, if you go to Iraq, if you go to Iran, of course we know about ISIS, these things are not so unusual in the Middle Eastern context. And um, this is what we need to get our heads around, is that Israel is a Western-style democracy, uh, standing up for the values of freedom, liberty, humanitarian values. And this is why we need to be standing with Israel, protecting those values, because those are the values that we believe in. We say we believe in them, believe in them, but, you know, they are under threat in this nation as well. And so it's really important that we stand with Israel at this time and that we're clear-minded about what the issues are. Mm. Is it important that groups in New Zealand, and, and, and we'll start with political parties and the government, but there are also many other communities that can express support, does it make any difference whether they express that support or not? And what do you make of groups... And I'm sorry, I, I read that Green Party statement. That seemed ambiguous to me. Yes, absolutely. It's, it's very important. The statements that our government makes are important locally and internationally. And when the Green Party quotes from the river to the sea, we will be free, that is a call to genocide. Because what, this, what that phrase is saying is that we want to free that whole territory of Jews. And that is the platform of Hamas. That's their intent. It's in their charter. They want to rid the area of, of Jews. Uh, it's, it's an anti-Semitic um, intent and, and it's also part of a very of a radical Islamist a political ideology and I just want to differentiate here between those who follow Islam as a peaceful religion and this radical political Islamist ideology which is behind a lot of this barbaric activity in the Middle East. Mm. Uh, Sheree, and, uh, and I, I'm wondering, has there been a statement from, and I know it's not its power structure or, or its structures that it's not uh, unified, it doesn't have a single spokesman, has the uh, Islamic community in New Zealand come out and said anything? Uh, Actually, I'm not sure. I, I haven't heard that there's been a statement from the um, Islamic community. 
yeah. uh, they may have, but I'm not aware of it. And given events in Christchurch, which were described rightly or wrongly as, as terrorism, you would expect them to have some sympathy for the people of Israel. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Um, Cherie, let's look at our government's support, uh, response. Now, Naima Huta initially issued a statement regretting the outbreak of hostilities. Yeah. And five or six hours later, Chris Hipkins, I think, was forced to clarify that because that also was an um, ambiguous statement. Were you disappointed yeah. in that when you read it from oh, Naima Huta? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I commented on her... Twitter feed, and I don't know whether Nanaya was um, simply ignorant and had not been following closely what was happening, and whether she just responded with the usual kind of patter of, of you know, moral equivalence, basically. Uh, I, I'm not sure if that's, that was what was happening um, there, but it, it was a statement that totally misread the situation and was unable to see that this this was different, it was significant. Uh, and when I say that, um, I don't accept that their messages in the past have been on, you know, on yeah. as well. You know, they have suffered from this, this view that yeah. uh, the well, idea... we do not. Our government response. does not recognise Hamas as a terrorist organisation. One would hope to I even that will change. Now, Australia does. Most of our allies do. Um, but yes. we do well, not. We do not well, say it, 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 it's a terrorist organisation and... Uh, if we're going to draw the link, Labor's also got a new policy to give heightened diplomatic status to Palestine. Yes, well, well, they have this this weird sort of idea that uh, that we do recognise that the um, military wing of Hamas is a terrorist organisation, but that's an artificial uh, distinction. You know, the, the the military wing cannot operate separately from the political wing of Hamas. It is one organisation, and by the way, it's funded by Iran. And the Hamas leaders are not in Gaza. Uh, they're elsewhere. Oh, sorry. Yeah, it's backed by Iran. It's funded by Qatar. So, so the leaders are not even in Gaza. They are elsewhere, <laughs> um, directing directing this. And I, and but coming back to your question, yes, for New Zealand, we we have this artificial distinction. And according to uh, official information documents. Um, the reason that we separate out the political wing is because it, quote, could limit New Zealand's ability to engage in pursuit of our national interests in the future, end quote. Uh, so what, what is that um, ability? What are those national interests? Uh, it's, it's trade with Iran because it's Iran that backs Hamas. 